You might think animal births go by the book, right? Well, let's rethink that. How about I tell you about some situations that went way off the expected path? For instance, consider this dog having babies, and when the vet checks, guess what? They're not puppies. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? But hang on, because I've got a story for you that shows just how full of surprises nature really can be. 10. Pregnancy Gone South Here's a tale that might seem like it's straight from a TV show about wild animals, but it actually happened right here in the US. There was this dog, Rosie, a golden retriever mix, with a story that pulls at your heart. Back in 2017, Rosie was in a tough spot. She was about to have puppies and had nowhere to go because she was left at a shelter. That's when News River Golden Retriever Rescue in North Carolina stepped up. They found her a temporary home with Katie and John Black, who are pretty much pros at helping dogs. They've taken care of more than 20 dogs since 2009. When Rosie moved in with the Blacks, everyone was in for a surprise. Though she looked like she'd have a big litter because of her size, she only had four puppies. And here's the twist. These puppies looked more like little cows than dogs because of their black spots. The Blacks, getting into the spirit of things, named them Clarabelle, Betsy, Daisy, and Moo. When they shared this story online, Rosie and her unique puppies quickly became famous. People started guessing who the father could be, throwing out guesses like a Dalmatian or an English setter because of the spots. While lots of folks loved the story, some weren't too happy, thinking the Blacks had planned this. But Katie set the record straight. Rosie was already pregnant when she came to them, and they're all about taking care of pets responsibly, including spaying and neutering. Rosie had her challenges, especially with a bacterial infection after giving birth, but she bounced back. She turned out to be a great mom to her unusual-looking puppies. Eventually, the puppies and Rosie found their forever homes. Rosie went to a guy who was really moved by her story. Through it all, Katie and John Black showed just how important it is to help rescue animals. 9. The Headless Chicken Something odd yet fascinating happened in Fruita, Colorado. There was this chicken named Mike, of the Wyandot breed, who became famous in a way you wouldn't believe. On April 20th, 1945, the whole thing started when Lloyd Olson, the farmer, was getting a chicken ready for dinner as his wife had asked. But after the axe fell, Mike didn't die. Instead, he lived without his head. It turns out a crucial part of his brainstem was still intact, and a lucky blood clot prevented him from dying. Olson decided to take care of Mike, feeding him with a dropper and Mike's story of beating the odds made him famous. He was in magazines and even the main attraction at sideshows, making quite a bit of money for Olsen. Mike remained a celebrity for 18 months, walking around and acting almost normal, which was both weird and amazing. The town of Fruita loved this story so much that they now celebrate Mike the Headless Chicken Day every May, bringing people together to remember this unbelievable chicken. But like all stories, Mike's came to an end in March 1947 in a Phoenix motel, of all places. A sad end to a chicken that had lived such an extraordinary life. Despite his passing, Mike left behind a story so unique that it inspired a festival in Fruita, full of races, games, and something they call chicken bingo. And every year, Fruita's celebration makes sure the tale of Mike the Headless Chicken keeps sparking wonder, smiles, and a bit of disbelief. 8. The Eyeless Fish Now, here's something pretty wild from the dark world of caves. Would you ever believe if I told you there is a fish without eyes living in the hidden spots of Madagascar and Australia? These mysterious fish have a story that takes us way back to when the Earth was made up of a giant supercontinent known as Gondwanaland. This cool bit of info comes from a study by Dr. Prasanta Chakrabarti and his team, who looked into the DNA of more than 100 types of goby fish. They were on a mission to figure out how these cave fish are connected, and boy, did they find something interesting. It turns out that the eyeless fish from Madagascar and Australia are like long-lost cousins on the genetic level, closer to each other than to any other goby fish out there. This suggests they had a common ancestor living 45 to 110 million years ago when Gondwanaland was still a thing. This huge land included places we now call Antarctica, Africa, South America, 
India, plus Australia and Madagascar. As time went on, Gondwanaland split apart, creating the continents we know today. This breakup led these fish to end up in their separate, hidden homes. The fact that we don't find these eyeless wonders in India, but do in Madagascar and Australia, brings up all sorts of questions. Did they move through Antarctica? Were they once in India, but somehow disappeared from there? Plus, finding a fish with pigment in an Australian cave, a new species in both places, suggests that caves aren't just dead ends for evolution, but rather hot spots for life, adapting and evolving in incredible ways. 7. Two-Headed Calf In Campbellsville, Kentucky, there's a farm with a cow that's catching everyone's eyes. This young calf, named Lucky, is making headlines because she's got two faces. Yes, you heard that right. Two faces on one head. This kind of thing is super rare, and Lucky has managed to live longer than most animals with this condition, which is pretty amazing. The McCubbins, Brandy and Stan, own the farm where Lucky lives. When they first saw her, they couldn't believe their eyes. But it didn't take long for them to fall in love with this special calf. They treat her just like a part of the family, giving her all the love and care she needs. Stan McCubbin told WDRB that he's never seen anything like it and thinks it's incredible. Brandy mentioned how they're just enjoying every day they have with Lucky, seeing it as a rare experience they can share with their kids and family. Lucky got her name from Henley, the McCubbin's five-year-old daughter, who thought the calf was lucky to be alive. And she's right. Animals born with two faces usually don't make it very far. There was a cat named Frank and Louis who lived to be 12, which was a big deal, but it's still uncommon for animals like this to live long. Living with two faces isn't easy. Lucky has a hard time moving around and eating. She has four eyes, but only two of them work, and both her mouths move at the same time when she tries to eat, which means she needs a bit of help. When Stan said when he first saw Lucky, he thought he was seeing two calves lying close to each other. He was totally blown away when he realized it was just one calf with two faces. A scientist named Arkut Abzanov explained that these rare conditions happen when an egg doesn't split properly or there's a genetic mix-up that causes the faces to duplicate. Even though it's really rare and can happen to wild animals or pets, the McCubbins are determined to give Lucky the best life possible. They're all about making sure she's comfortable and loved, no matter how unique she is. 6. Mammoth Skeleton Back in the days of the Ice Age, mammoths were the giants walking around, ruling the ancient world. Fast forward to now, in the quiet farmlands near Chelsea, Michigan, some people stumbled upon something huge. Daniel Fisher and his team from the University of Michigan found the remains of a mammoth, which got named the Bristle Mammoth after James Bristle, the guy who owns the land. This all kicked off in 2015 when they were just putting in a new drainage system and ended up finding a mammoth skull, tusks, and lots of bones. It was so cool that it got its own news video. They didn't stop there, though. In 2017, they went back and dug up 40 more bones and bits, trying to get the full story of this mammoth. Turns out, this mammoth was over 15,000 years old. Even cooler, there were signs that people back then had been using the mammoth, probably for food. This could be the oldest evidence of humans hanging out with mammoths in this part of the world. James Bristle, being the generous guy he is, let the university keep the mammoth remains so they could study them more. The second time they dug, they were trying to figure out more about where the mammoth lived, not just finding more bones. They took samples of the dirt around it to learn about the old environment, like what kind of plants were there and what the climate was like. This mammoth find tells us a lot, not just about the mammoths, but also about the people who lived in Michigan way before we thought anyone was there. They might have used the place where the mammoth was found as a kind of ancient fridge to keep meat cool. All of this digging and studying was supported by the friends of the University of Michigan Museum of Paleontology, and it's giving us a peek into how humans and mammoths might have interacted a long, long time ago. 
five, the Florida skunk ape. So dive into the heart of Florida and you'll hear a story that's as weird as it is stinky. This is all about the Florida skunk ape, a creature that's caused quite a bit of excitement and a little bit of worry too. This whole thing kicked off just three days before Christmas in 2000. It was a peaceful house that suddenly turned into a scene from a movie with noises and bangs like a giant wandering around the garden, complete with strange deep noises and a smell that could knock you over. It was so bad, people said it smelled like something rotting. The family at this house couldn't believe their eyes when they looked outside. There was this huge, hairy thing standing on their deck, looking like it jumped straight out of a time when dinosaurs roamed, not something you'd expect to see outside your window. At first, they thought it might be an orangutan that had gotten loose, but the story took a twist. The picture they managed to get of this creature set the internet on fire with guesses and theories. Some folks who are really into mysterious animal sightings started saying it was the skunk ape, which is kind of like Florida's answer to Bigfoot. Then there's Dave Sheely, who's pretty much the expert on these creatures. He's been following the skunk ape for ages, ever since he ran into one when he was a kid. Now, he runs a place called the Skunk Ape Headquarters, where he keeps on the lookout for them. He's super serious about proving they're out there, wandering around the Everglades. According to Sheely and others who believe, the Skunk Ape looks a bit like Bigfoot, but has its own unique style. They supposedly hang out in groups, are pretty chill despite looking intimidating, and oh, they absolutely reek. The smell is like a wet dog mixed with a skunk, which is why they got their name. So that's the scoop on the Florida Skunk Ape, a big, smelly mystery that's got people looking and wondering if they'll catch a glimpse of it in the wild. Four penis snake. If you ever find yourself wandering through the Brazilian rainforest, you might run into something pretty odd, the Atritochoana Izelti. People often call it the penis snake because, well, it looks a lot like a human penis. This creature is actually an amphibian, part of the Sicilian family, and it's been puzzling folks for a long time. It wasn't until 2011 that people really started to pay attention to it again. This so-called penis snake calls the watery parts of the Brazilian rainforest home. It's a champion's swimmer, cruising through the water with no trouble at all. Not only is it known for its peculiar look, but it's also quite big for its kind, stretching up to 80 centimeters, about 32 inches long. That makes it the biggest of its kind without lungs. Yep, you heard that right. It doesn't have lungs. Its skin, which ranges from pink to purple, does all the breathing for it through tiny blood vessels. Its head is wide and flat. It has no visible nostrils, and its mouth is pretty big, top off with a weird, fleshy fin. While there's a lot of guessing about what it eats, people think it probably munches on small fish, worms, and other little water creatures. When it comes to whether this creature is at risk of disappearing, the experts say there's not enough data. That means they're not really sure how many are out there or exactly where they live. This hints that they might not be very common and could be facing threats from changes in their environment. Despite its name, the penis snake is a real marvel of nature, showing just how diverse and adaptable life can be. It lives its life in the Amazon and Madeira rivers, but there's still a lot we don't know about how it lives, breathes, and eats. But just like a lot of other creatures out there, it's under threat from things like cutting down forests, pollution, and the building of dams, which mess up its home. As we keep pushing into nature, it's important to remember animals like the penis snake. Three the proboscis monkey. So let's head over to Borneo in Southeast Asia, where you'll meet the proboscis monkey, a monkey that's as odd as it is interesting. These guys are famous for their super long noses and love hanging out in mangrove forests along the coast. They really stand out in the green, lush landscapes where they live. These monkeys make their homes in the thick forests of Borneo, right by the water. They eat mostly young leaves, some fruit that's not yet ripe, and now and then they'll snack on insects or tiny creatures. They've got a stomach that works a lot like a cow's, which helps them digest all that leafy stuff they eat. What's really cool about the adult males is their big hanging noses, which can be over 10 centimeters, almost four inches long. Females and younger monkeys have smaller noses, but the big nose isn't just there for looks. As they get older, their fur changes from dark to a beautiful reddish brown, making their big noses even more noticeable. And they're excellent swimmers, which is pretty unique for monkeys. These monkeys are all about social life, forming groups with lots of social ranks and rules. They communicate with sounds, like calming honks for the little ones and loud calls if there's danger nearby. At night, they sleep in trees right by the water, which helps keep them 
them safe from predators. But there's a bit of a sad side to their story. The proboscis monkey is endangered, facing threats from logging, oil palm plantations, and hunting. Their numbers have dropped by half in just a few decades, which is why it's so important to protect them. In the wild, these monkeys can live up to 23 years, and it turns out the males with the biggest noses are more attractive to the females, which is a fascinating part of how they choose mates. It's illegal to have these monkeys as pets, which is all part of trying to keep them safe and stop their numbers from going down even more. 2. The Long-Eared Goat in the world of animals, where being quick or blending in can mean the difference between catching dinner or being dinner, there's a story about cuteness that stands out from the rest. Let's talk about baby goats, known for their playful jumps and how adorable they are. But among them, there's one little guy who's catching everyone's attention, not because he's the fastest, but because of his incredibly long ears. Meet Simba, a Nubian baby goat from Karachi, Pakistan, whose ears are so long they might just break a world record. Simba's ears measure a whopping 48 centimeters, that's almost 19 inches, and since he's not even a month old yet, there's a chance they could grow even more. Imagine that, a goat with ears so long, they might get him into the Guinness World Records. As Simba hops around, his ears, like a golden waterfall of fur, sweep the ground and flutter in the breeze, making everyone who sees him smile. Muhammad Hassan Narejo, the goat farmer who owns Simba, couldn't believe his eyes when he first saw those ears. It was a mix of shock and wonder. To make sure Simba can run and play without tripping over his own ears, Narejo came up with a smart solution. He made special soft pouches for Simba's ears. Nubian goats are already known for having long ears, which help keep them cool. But Simba's ears are something else, thanks to a unique twist in his genes. Despite this, Simba is as healthy and playful as any baby goat, full of energy and mischief. As Simba grows, his story is reaching people all over, not just in Pakistan. With every flutter of his extraordinary ears, he's showing the world how diverse and fascinating the animal kingdom really is. 1. Sheep. That looks like a goat. Over in North Wales, something new happened that shook up the usual countryside scene. The Damara sheep, a breed that sits between a sheep and a goat with big, fat hindquarters and not much wool, was introduced. This special breed, originating from Africa, stepped hoof on UK soil for the first time thanks to two farmers from Anglesey, Peter Williams, and Bedward Jones. These farmers brought over some embryos, hoping the Damara sheep would adapt well to the Welsh weather. They were interested in how these tough sheep would fare in Wales, and were looking at the demand for the unique taste of Damara meat, especially among communities in the UK who appreciate it in their traditional dishes. Peter Williams, with his farm in Bringran, Anglesey, brought his knowledge of Damara sheep from his time farming in Saudi Arabia. He noted they look more like goats than sheep, particularly because of their skinny legs and the big fat tails they are famous for. But here's where it gets even more interesting. Williams and Jones didn't just plan on raising pure Damaras. They intended to introduce Damara genes to local sheep through imported semen. This innovative crossbreeding approach promised to change the game for Welsh sheep farming. The Damara sheep had already proven their resilience in tough climates like Australia, performing just as well as they did in Africa. Williams planned to let some graze on his lower fields, while Jones would take some to the rougher lands of Snowdonia, testing how well the Damaras could adjust to different weather conditions. This innovation excited Geraint Hughes, a farming consultant who saw big changes ahead for sheep farming in the UK. The interest in the unique meat provided by these fat-tailed sheep suggested the Damara could become the 61st breed of sheep in Britain. Everyone eagerly awaited the spring when the first Damara lambs were expected to arrive in Wales, marking the start of a new chapter in British farming that brought a little bit of Africa to the rolling hills of Wales. Which moment of the story left you in utter astonishment? Share with us which part of this unexpected turn of events grabbed your attention in the comments below. And remember to keep an eye out for more incredible tales of the unexpected.